Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Week. This show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, NVIDIA has unveiled their Giga Ray Tip Crusher 9000. They're really, really shiny. And crazy justice in all caps, because that's how they do things, has entered early access, but kind of just for backers, because, yeah, they didn't really mention that at all. Steam Play takes on a whole new meaning. Come listen to us whine about it. And Strider's having a bad week as yet another challenger appears. Community compiles a list, a heretic list, and Gog says, fuck DRM. This time for real, you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Vince Stone here at LJC Actual, switching the bits, trying to keep this uh, show starting off right, apparently, from catching on fire, doing a poor job of that. Um, that is one Jordan Swing in Canadian land. You Hello. Know. Hi. He's there. And I'm from thinking. Britannia. Hello. Pedro, <laughs> uh, probably going to show you an Xbox in a few minutes. Mateus, because together with you at home, Shot Realm Dynamic, <laughs> you guys help us form Coke and Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Since neither of you wrote fuck or all down, I'm going to go first. How about that? Do it. Hey. Fine. I dare, I dare you. I double dog dare you. <laughs> How about this then? How about this? Uh, at the end of next month, I'm going to do something extremely dangerous. It's uh, going to be kind of terrifying. Are you going to install Windows 2000? I, uh, 2003 AS, man. What do you think? I am a scrub? Yeah. All right. So uh, I got a notification for jury duty. Oh. And I'm just going to leave that there because both Jordan, Pedro, and a couple of patrons know exactly what I'm going to fucking do. <laughs> Jordan? Yes. Um, oh, well, now, now, now I'm looking forward to the footage <laughs> and possible news coverage from Ben's very duty trip. No, I've been fucking. I used to do layouts for a school paper back in the day, and now I'm setting up layouts for OBS. And I remembered how much I fucking hate adjusting things a pixel, one pixel at a time. It's the worst. God damn it. I hate myself. But I hate Pedro more. What about you? Hello. <laughs> well, I'm the person who Jordan hates, and I spent most of today doing this. Putting all of this inside the inner cage of an Xbox 360. No. How, how water resistant is though? Uh, once the, uh, the rest of the shell is done, and I'm actually, you know, confident in its uh, paint job, I'm sure it will be more than it is now, because... Yeah, no. Are you, you, you going to put that to the test? I think I think we need, need to do the garden hose challenge. <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, an, an, another hose has opened this week. Um, yeah, the, the 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 floodgates have opened, and the horse is looking rather damp. It's the steam Linux update. Oh, the the way. Way. All right, so this is this is the big. Big news that everyone's talking about. Oh my God, Steam Wine, or as they call it, Proton, Ron Paul Dutchiff. So uh, Valve has uh, released a custom version of Wine. It is available. Uh, you, can, you can enable it uh, by updating to the Steam beta. You can turn on the thing uh, in the uh, tick box. They have, they have a guide on how to set it up in the article. You should check out the links to the show notes. And yeah, it's it's a custom version of Wine um, that comes by default with DXVK uh, D3D9 or D3D2 VK, which is a DirectX 12 to Vulkan translation layer. Um, some magical Steam input stuff and OpenVR support. Uh, so they're, uh, alongside, they have a curated list of games that are saying, "Here's the things that we've actually tested with our custom version of Wine." Uh, you can there's a tick box you can uh, enable to basically say, "Try it with everything," and then all your all your your Steam game count will go from just the Linux ones to all all of them, the Windows and Mac and Linux games. Um, yeah, and so far people are freaking out. They're like, "Oh, th it's time we we can we can finally play our Windows games on Linux because it's not like Lutris or anything like that existed previously." No, no. Uh, one of the things I found genuinely genuinely interesting was it kind of came out that shoe dropped that Steam was financing the development of DXVK. Oh, that was pretty it, 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 make, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But the most important bit of news from all of this is now from inside your Steam client on Linux, you can one-click install Skyrim. 
And it works with the Steam controller out of the box. Out of the fucking we're, box, right. We were talking, we, we, about, we, we, we were talking about that, yeah. <laughs> the pre pre super shows, and go check that out. Uh, the Proton build that they released Wednesday, because Steam kind of cocked up a little bit, accidentally contained, uh, it was a debug build. So mm-hmm. things were mm-hmm. a little bit... The performance bit was subpar. <laughs> yeah. In some, in some cases. I gotta be honest, though. I kind of ran down like the list of... Because I think I... Pedro was trying to help me out too. I was like, all right, what's a free game or a game that has a benchmark? Mm-hmm. Then I think maybe we could do some benchmarks, man. Everything I tried just pooped itself pretty bad. Kind of reminded me why I don't bother trying to play games <laughs> with wine in the first place. But um, what are your thoughts, Pedro? Yeah, it's uh, part of me really loves it because part of me really likes playing Dark Souls. And uh, both of the Dark Souls I have, uh, one and two, they. Yeah, they're a one-click install. With Dark Souls 1, you still have to put in the mods, but yeah, that's easy enough to do. And it's like, oh, oh, everything just runs. It's You literally click, and it it's there. You can play it. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, Jordan mentioned the whitelist, but the community Racist. getting a bit ahead of the... Um... Oh, no, we, 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 we still got some stuff to talk about here, don't we? Oh, oh fuck okay. yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Jordan, don't you understand? Pedro was done talking, so therefore, it's like, oh, this topic's over. <laughs> yeah, right, no, go on then. <laughs> no, no more to be said about this. Uh, then you, you have the next bit in the notes. You want to take that? Or? Yeah, uh, one of the things I, I want to say, and this is going to be just like, you're wrong, but hey, man, I'm used to being wrong. Uh, the one thing that I believe that Valve got right with this, or I think it's the right way of going about this, even though it's kind of the wrong way, is the complete lack of options. You have a play button. Maybe you can select your Proton version in the future, but that's really all you have. And they're even going to say, here's a curated list, and we're going to work to you know get on that list or whatever. We got to do that. And I like that. You click play. It either works or don't. That's the end of the story. There's no, mm, maybe I can futz with this, futz with that. And you know, you're know you sitting there. It's like, well, I know damn well that I, I can get this game to run with this version of Wine and you know with X, Y, and Z installed. And... You know, you're 100% right, but I don't think that's the target audience for this. This is, it either works or doesn't, you know? Right, um, right. and and part, part of that too is like people are screaming, well, it's the end of Lutris now. No more no more Frenchie for you. Uh, but that's the thing though. If if you are one of those people who's like, I know that this game works with this particular version of wine, Lutris exists to facilitate more advanced usage. And I think mm-hmm. and I think that's sort of where Strider is kind of pivoting this towards um my concern though is that this is kind of the 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 straw that will say the win32 api is the now de facto standard for pc gaming if you're going to release a game on the pc ecosystem then be it be it windows be it mac be it linux now that proton exists as long as you're really targeting vulcan that's because that's what that's what valve wants they they basically they have a section in the article for developers they say well how does this affect us well it doesn't but we recommend that you don't stress the compatibility layer. Don't stress the API translation and write your shit natively in Vulkan so that we don't have to fuck around with DXVK or D3DVK. Um, but that still leaves the underlying game development being done targeting primarily Windows. And I, th- I, th- and I think this is, this is sort of it. This is going to be, well, we, we mo- most big companies or mo- most companies who are looking at supporting Linux outside of the people who are, who are already familiar with the tooling we're, we're, we're talking about people who are net new to the platform. Uh, they're going to say, well, we can support Proton, or we we, we, we kind of get Proton support for free. We don't really have to worry about that. And I, I, I don't know. This, this, uh, this, is, this is putting the onus on Steam now uh, to ensure that there will be games for Linux if Steam survives. Dun, dun, dun. I also believe it's very important to um, consider this is Steam. They very well could forget this project exists a month from now. So, yeah, just the yeah. updates never come, and this is as good as it gets. But they did open source um, Proton, so the GitHub is there. You can pull it, you can build it, you can fix it. Send pull requests to Valve, they're probably going to merge it. This is true, and one thing we'll probably touch on more in the hate mail section, stay tuned for that, is uh, a lot of people were asking. They're like, hey man, where, where does this land with my heretic purchases? Well... Us being us, we traveled all the way to the fatherland, and uh, we we consulted the ever wise Panzer of the Lake. Yeah, yeah. Wine, wine, wine is wine. If you if, yeah. if, 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 if you bought it to play it with Proton, then it's still a heretic purchase. That's There's right. a native Linux yeah. version. You're good. 
All right. Uh, let's quit talking about Proton. No, All right. let's talk more, more about Proton. Proton. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the community decided to get ahead of Valve a little bit and just enabled, uh, as you called it on Wednesday, then, Wild West mode, and just try all the games. And there's a pretty big spreadsheet, and there's even a published version of that spreadsheet, which pegs one of the 12 threads of my Ryzen 5 1600 at 100% whenever I scroll through it, which is not the case with the one that uh, you're looking at right now. Uh, it's got a lot of games, like a lot of them. Uh, it's not complete as per the uh, the spreadsheet, but it, it gives you a very good idea of what to expect and even includes some fixes because, yes, even though Proton is very locked down so you can't really uh, easily get access to Wine CFG and Wine Tricks from Steam itself, you can still totally set the uh, prefix to that one and then run those uh, those tools. It's just amazing to see what the community has been able to put together in such a short time. It's like everyone testing all the games that they have for Windows on Linux. Like, oh, look, tons yeah, of games now work. They're, they're a bunch of eager beavers. <laughs> um, I mean, like, I, the most obscure game I tried was Legacy of Cain Defiance, just because that's, like, legitimately one of my favorite games. And it ran, but there wasn't any controller support yet. But, I mean... Because because of the Steam input mod, uh, stuff, I think we're going to start seeing a lot more Steam controller profiles for games as well. Mm -hmm. So that will ease adoption a bit, I hope, anyways, because I really want to play that game again. It's so good. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I completely agree with that. Uh, I I tried Skyrim. I genuinely was like, okay, <laughs> let's see if this... Oh, wow, that worked out. Oh, I remember my save game, too. Oh, no. <laughs> and... So I immediately uninstalled it and got, got it away from me. <laughs> uh, then I tried the Mafia 2 because I realized I was like, wait a minute, I have that. And it just booped itself. Then I tried something else. It just booped itself. And it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm out. Peace. But Oh, I uh, tried uh, Trackmania United Forever. I, I Works out of the box. Okay. I, I tried that, like, you know, when they, like, broke the part two up in, like, five parts. Like the drifting Oh, one. no. Uh, that's uh that's track media too yeah that one uh, uh, that one i tried uh just uh, the valley one i promise you ladies and gentlemen <laughs> i'm going to get a sentence out in a minute go ahead pedro <laughs> i tried uh track media 2 valley and it also worked out of the box so yeah <laughs> it tried to i mean all right technically it launched it launched in the wrong monitor and when i tried to get it over to the uhd monitor it told me to go eat a bag of dicks so that's kind of where we're at with that so um a little backstory Wine and Steam, a major milestone. Code Weavers helped out with this quite a bit, and Code Weavers has been awesome with contributing to wine and doing the business. And well, they've been they've been the uh, they've been the guys who are like the sort of where the wine development funds come from, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of walk through, and they're like, "Hey, man, th this is what we did. This is how we helped out." And I just wanted to give them a little shout out and be like, "That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I'm glad." And that is probably the only reason that I've ever bought. Uh, Code Weaver, and it's been a long time, admittedly, mm -hmm. but I bought Code Weaver's office or something like that. Uh, crossover, I think it was. Crossover. That crossover, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, hey, man, they helped the wine project, and wine's yeah, not my and, thing, but hey, it's good that it's there. It's a tool. Use it. Yeah. Valve Indeed. is really good at keeping quiet about things, apparently, because <laughs> no one had any idea. It's like, oh, look, these guys were helping too. Cool. <laughs> it's called highly punitive NDAs. And I'm sure all these projects are also more than happy to suckle on Valve's money teat. So Oh come oh, on. Yeah. Let's be real about it. They did they did this project like two years ago and somebody just like remembered like, wait, what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. let's put that up. So someone mm -hmm. accidentally hit publish. Right. Merge like, the shit. master. All right. We, we better I don't know, might as well make a blog post. <laughs> uh speaking of shit that Valve accidentally released. <laughs> uh Steam Broadcasting, we talked about this um, a while ago. Well, not a while ago, last week. Which I guess Billions of years ago. <laughs> a thousand years ago in the future. Um, yeah, so there was um, there was a page leak that was the new Steam Broadcasting for T Internationals, the big Dota tournament. And uh, so now that the cat's out of the bag, they decided to say, you know what, here's, here's what we're doing with it. Uh, there, there's uh, Steamworks integration with it, so it'll actually create like custom... Uh, bookmarks on on the video timeline for like oh here's here's the first kill here's where everyone else died and so on and so forth which I think is actually pretty neat but they're saying in this article that it's all very Dota two specific um, 
but it would be interesting, like having some sort of in-game integration for um, broadcasting mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. uh, built built into uh, very competitive games because that makes people like Ben's job way easier sometimes. <laughs> that is one thing that really caught my eyes. Like, hey man, you, the timestamps and the ability to go back with the timestamps and the broadcast and be like, boom, 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 boom. You could lay that out. Now, currently this is only for Dota and I watched a little bit of it. I got to admit that I, I give fuck all about Dota, but the quality was nice. Yeah. And it's, it, uh, let's face it, Dota is Valve's big moneymaker outside of, you know, the whole store. But yeah, it's their prized possession when it comes to games right now, because they're never going to release Half-Life 3, let's be honest. No, so, they're, they're going to do a card game instead. <laughs> That's going to yeah, make them even more money. <laughs> they're going to release Dota Hearthstone. <laughs> All right, short Steve, fourth stone. tell me about it. What is it? All right, uh, so this is a uh, this is a project on GitHub. You can check that out. Link to that in the show notes as usual from Corporal Quesadilla. Um, as far as I can tell, this is basically a thing that uh, will take shortcuts and then boop them into your Steam. So you know how you can go through the menu and add like uh, in install a non Steam game, and it'll it'll just create a shortcut, and you'll still get the overlay, but you won't get any of the features. You'll just get chat. This essentially lets you. If, if you combine this with the script to like locate shortcuts of other games, you can essentially automate. Um, you can automate adding non Steam games to Steam, which I guess if you're really, really anti GUI and you have a lot of stuff you want to run through Steam, maybe you want to tech check out some Proton shit. Um, then this is the way to do it. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's yeah. it. I, as someone who is uh, putting together a uh, Steam OS box, I really wish that someone would do something that would allow you to, instead of having to drop into desktop mode to create a shortcut to, say, an emulator uh, or an emulated game, and then having to ch mod it and uh, ch own it to a completely different user, and then go back into big picture mode in Steam OS to add it through the Steam client. It's like, can we cut some of those steps out, please, Valve? Listen, please. Let's listen. I think the real question here is, when when Lutris OS? Lutros. Mm. There we go, man. Uh, <laughs> Windows 10 exclusive. Uh, removed games, DLC, and software. Why is this important? Well, this is important because, well, as you may have, ha have happened to you, um, you probably saw a couple of games that are no longer on the Steam store, or some which are still in the store but don't actually let you buy it. So maybe you wanted to compile a list of those games. Well, these fine folks decided, yes, that is exactly what we'll do, and they created um, remove.timekillers. We got, we got some winners in here, man. I got... Earth 2066, Storm United. Mm -hmm. I was looking Powerpuff for Necro. Girls, Defenders of Townsville. That was a good one, man. Sword Coast yeah. Legends. And it gives you, it actually oh, separates. Shit, they took down uh, Lego minifigures online. I think because yep. they killed the servers for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it gives you two different lists. One is for the games which were completely removed from the store, and the other is just for games who are still in the store, but you can't buy them, like Legends of Aetherius. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's kind of one of those neat projects that you look at every now and then and say, oh, okay, that happened. And you go about your life. That, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, basically you just used to see what the value of your, um, <laughs> account In Steam is. account. Yeah. Right. I, no more, no less. It is I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I think maybe my profile settings aren't set correctly because, like, if they got shit like Defenders of Townsville, I it showed up as no removed games for me. So yeah, you, you remember when they did the privacy thing? You got to, you have to go in and reset that, or you uh, yeah, see. I, I, bar I barely look at my Steam profile, so I kind of forgot that was a thing. That's it. Uh, Rocket Car is a little bit of an update, right? Yep, yeah, uh, they have a little bit of an update. Uh, teeny tiny one. They say that like the new bands and the uh, the new pass will come uh, along with the rocket ID will come with the next update. But uh, right now you get some new things like avatar borders. Really? Mm -hmm. Are we running a bit short on ideas? Nope. Uh, <laughs> Real time filtering for text uh, related to clubs and tournaments. 
So if you are watching it uh, on a stream somewhere, you'll be able to easily identify each team, new achievements and trophies, because, yeah, and a particle details video option. I wonder if this is what will fix the um, no. perky jerks that you get. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, let's let's be real. They have produced that Linux build of Rocket League, and unless there's like a security issue or like some horrible game breaking bug, they're not going to touch that shit. I and mean, if it is just a performance thing, maybe listen, they can fix it. No, 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 no. And especially with like the demo jerk, that will actually screw up your game because mm-hmm. y- you have muscle memory at this point. That is like, <laughs> nope, nope, stop. All right, then get ready for that jump yep. after that. <laughs> So, hmm, I don't know. Uh, keep on going. Rock on rocket cars and have fun like doing this new weird thing that you got going on. But I, hey, man, it doesn't affect gaming. And we don't play competitively, but join us in the after yeah. shows. <laughs> we, 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 we certainly do get competitive, though. Well, true. <laughs> true. Um, You're a bit sweary. <laughs> let's talk about some of the new games coming to Steam. Oh, no. yes. <laughs> let's start with some shovelware. Why won't we? Uh, so, this is Save the Girl. Save the girl, the last survivor of a zombie apocalypse, and you play as the girl, titular girl that she is, uh, on a motorcycle, and you have to do a bit of jump. I, honestly, I, I I have no idea what the hell is Wait, going on here. Hold, 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 hold up, hold up. So, if the girl is the one riding the motorcycle, mm-hmm. and the goal is to save the girl, are you the motorcycle? Is this like heat vision and um, jack? Yeah, yeah, heat vision. Yeah. <laughs> No, this is a fourth wall breaking the video game. We didn't really pay attention to what we were doing. No, man. Here's because... what this is. Look, th- this is this is Excite Bite, but it looks worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, ho- hopefully it's not a massive memory leak. Yeah. And it will yeah, be yeah, infinitely yeah. better than the other game of that sort on Linux. And uh, you can see the assets if you've ever seen a YouTube video complaining about uh, games just using assets bought from a store somewhere. You've seen those buildings. You've seen those barrels. You've seen those motorcycles. So, yeah. It's a thing, man. I mean, it, this, this is going to shut people up. We're like, Road Redemption didn't look good. It was like, just show them this. They're like, Road mm-hmm. Redemption looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like something. All right. RPGs, but li- yeah, yeah. Listen, don't, don't push your drugs on me, Pedro. I'm clean. <laughs> I'm straight edge, like a knife. Okay. Well, can I push a conundrum then, a riddle, if you will? Uh, this game describes itself, and I quote: "Sukaban DRPG is a challenging puzzle game." Whoa, hey, whoa. did you did you say Sukaban? <laughs> Sukaban. No. Uh, so yeah, it uh, describes itself as an RPG which is a challenging puzzle game. So, which is it? Well, so, if you look at the pictures, you could tell that it is an RPG maker game, so I guess that's where the RPG bit comes from, and the focus is on the puzzles, I guess. Well, so so that's that's the thing, right? It's 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 block puzzles. It says it says it right in the title, in the description, you gob. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, I I guess for the JRPG thing, right? It's it's one of those things where oh, the, you're on you're on a plot railroad, you go talk to people, you get party members, but instead of grinding, you solve block puzzles. And I guess, I guess like you know, here's the thing. Cause you read that and you're like, Oh, this is all, all right. This is a fun little JRPG. And you can push around some blocks. Go visit it kids. It's age gated. So those <laughs> yeah, blocks are getting fucked. Uh, <laughs> oh no, no. It, it, it straight up says violent sexual content on okay. the tags. Well, while pushing around blocks, this, that might be interesting. Uh, listen, <laughs> It really it depends on where you're pushing those blocks into. Am I right? Giggity. Uh All Half right. Life Three. Yes, Gordon's mod. Um. Well. Uh. Hold, hold on. I've 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 a bit prepared for this. Fuck you, Gordon Freeman. You disrespect iron chick. I put you in the camel clutch. Make you humble, Baba. This, 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 this so is this is jabroni. Racist. I know. I know. It's terrible. Um. This is jabroni brawl episode three. <laughs> uh. Which. Essentially what it is, is they've taken a bunch of um, one once popular mods from Half-Life, like the OG Half-Life, uh, updated them to Half-Life 2, collected and curated them, and put them all in one little convenient package called Jabroni Brawl. Um, it's going to be, apparently it's going to be available eventually. Uh, it, ha- it, has, uh, it has a Battle Royale mode, a Counter-Strike mode. Scientist hunt, scientist survival, insta give, gun game, bunch of different modes. Uh, if 
you played a lot of Half-Life mods back in the day. Is that a ricochet pad? It is a ricochet pad. Oh, <laughs> I, I really wish this I really wish there's a ricochet mode in here. But uh if you were a big um there, there, there was a there was a uh if you were a big fan of the OG Half-Life mod scene uh for stuff like the specialists and whatnot, uh you might want to check this out once it comes out when these guys feel like it. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> Looks neat, and as Jordan pointed out, it's available like whenever, man. So <laughs> whenever, man. <laughs> However, that rules. So uh, one thing I wanted to talk about last week, we definitely addressed because it was all over the social media on the Twitters. They're like crazy justice. It was the, uh, it still is, uh, dangerously uh, Fortnite game. Mm-hmm. Dangerously mm-hmm. so. I can't. I can't believe it's not Fortnite. Roughly, man. Uh, but. That's rolled out, Battle Royale and all that. All week, they were like, early access, early access, it's going to launch. And it launched, and they're like, oh, 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 did we forget to leave out that early access is for backers only? Which I don't have a problem with, motherfuckers. I don't. Not not in the slightest. But I do when you omit shit like that and try to get people psyched up about something. And it turns mm-hmm. out the Linux build, yeah, they forget to uh, include a little thing called Libsteam API. <laughs> fucking really what they did it's a thing if you can fix it you can copy it from a functioning game over mm-hmm. but even if you do even if you do uh it runs like poo it's yeah. missing textures and uh that makes me sad because i really want to uh i want to play this game i know Arthurin had it i don't think he was able to get it up and running and uh mm-hmm. They just kind of went radio silent, and everyone's in the Steam forums going, no one's playing. Are yeah, they there, doing there, it on there, there's, nice there's a nice little thing at the top of more discussions. It just says, it's already dead. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the game isn't actually out yet. It's in early um, access, kind of, their version. Yeah, their version of Early Access, which is pre-order exclusive, apparently. Because that's a good idea. Um, So, yeah, they've already blown their release. It's like, you get one release, and this was it. You failed. Miserably. I don't want them to fail. I, I Yeah, want... I don't want them to fail either, but... Again, again, if they... Have, if they, I, I just feel like kind of get used, because they never mentioned... I have no problem with it being backer exclusive early access because distance I mean, did d- it. distance was that for that a while, was right? fine, but it was clearly communicated mm-hmm. instead of saying, "Hey, everybody, this is a thing," and going, "Psych," and <laughs> in its early access, it can be busted. That's fine. The only thing I have that issue with was like, "Oh, we're better words for early access backers." <laughs> what? Okay, I, again, would have been fine with that. You should you should have told the like because. You got a tough sell. You got a Fortnite clone, man. You got a battle royale game at like the tail end of this thing, like being popular. So, yeah, yeah. And I wanted it to be popular, much like you, because we don't have um, anything like Fortnite natively on Linux. Mm-hmm. No Fortnite, no PUBG, none of that. And also, as I mentioned when we first covered this. Um, this game, when it showed up on the, the Steam store, it's like it it was funded by Fig. So, is this what we can expect from Fig games from now on? Well, I'm a little disappointed that they released it because I mean, it, not 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 shipping with the Lib Steam API means that that's almost insulting. I mean, you genuinely have 100 percent that no one tested this. Before yep. they pushed it out, that, that, that's a that's a massive QA failure on there. Right, part. that is like genuinely they they're just letting you know we didn't even fucking look at this thing, but here it is. And I'm also disappointed in Fig saying, "Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, go ahead and ship that." As the publishers, like just just basic things like I mean, it's 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, you should at least launch. I don't know. At least it's, it's early access. You can't complain about games. Early access. Before, it's when you do get it up and running on your own accord, it runs like poo and it's got issues, but we should be grateful. I know I'll shut up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And while Ven is being gagged with a sock, we'll move on to the next segment where we will talk about Strider's favorite new video card and uh, God deciding that it wants to get a little bit righteous up in our faces. 
Twitch Game Cast Weekly is entering its early access phase. No, wait, that was the seg- segment. We're already done with that. This listen, will be the new No, 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 no. We could legitimately say it's still early access in six years because we've seen games do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how, how, how many years was distance in early access? Because I think that's six. the hard limit. Yeah. Uh, five. Close enough All to right. six. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, this, this is LGC version 9999. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the uh, Solus approach. I like it. <laughs> yeah, and if, 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 you, if you want to add more nines to the party, you can head on over to linuxgamecast.com. Click the support the show button. There's all sorts of interesting links that you can click on. They're fascinating. They can they prompt you for your credit card number. You should enter them. Uh, we got new links, Amazon affiliate links, um, Humble affiliate links. You can raise money for charity through Linux Gamecast. That's the only bit of public good we actually do. The rest of it is grossly outweighed by the evil we produce. Um, and of course, all the cool kids have to head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. That thing that funds the vast majority of the shenanigans that go on here uh, like the five, di- five or four other days a week. Counting, we it's five, math. Five total. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to figure out how to formulate that sentence. Um, we got all sorts of Patreon exclusive content, access to the pre super shows, and where which is kind of our production meeting, and you get and you get a bunch of other cool stuff like um, show note access if you want to suggest stories or banter with us during the week we had a new patreon to think though it's uh aldius who was piping up in the uh in the break you can see him down there in the, in the little discord window yes hey man it's yeah. a big discord window to us because you're our bosses you make this nonsense possible i want to thank everyone for tapping on those um amazon affiliate links smash smash that doll <laughs> smash that uh affiliate link button fab or some shit like that i don't know maybe that works uh but you you guys make it possible and as always uh Stay tuned to the credits. You will be in that business along with Frank's fuck wall. Normally Frank's hanging out oh, yes. right here, but I'm in the middle of uh, redoing audio stuff. So Frank's over there chilling out, kind of eyeing me down like motherfucker. I want to be on the camera, but <laughs> don't worry. He will show up. Frank's a star, man. It is kind of brilliant. It's our way of giving back. Thanking you for helping us. Uh, shameless self promotion. Let, let's quit yeah. doing that. And uh, mm-hmm. shameless self promotion. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's the Humble Spooky Horror Bundle 2018. You have nine days left to get this. Pay a little as one wet, stinky American cash for white noise, two layers of doors, and some other Windows bullshit. But hey, if you beat the average of 815, you get some weed bullshit, too, called overwhelmingly <laughs> pot weed. No, just attention. And, uh, all right. That, that's it. That, that, <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's what you get. Um, ben, we were, we, were ta- we were talking a bit about uh, white noise, though. Uh, well, listen, man, White Noise 2 and Layer for Buck. Might as well go ahead and pick that up because it is a uh, four on one, you know? I'm kind of digging that. And we might be playing some of that uh, this coming week, maybe on Ooh. Friday Fubar. So I like the asymmetrical version of that because let's face it, we're never getting that Evolve game or whatever the hell that was. And yeah. might want to keep that in handy. Uh, yeah. You like it. <laughs> If, well, if you want a bit of a blast from, blast from the past, go and track down our uh, little little recording of White Noise 1. Check this out. <laughs> you could actually go to LinuxGameCast.com, use our search engine, because that works incredibly well now because I changed the theme on the website. I know, it's yes. fantastic. <laughs> That's how that works. Anyway. The magic of CSS. <laughs> go put that nonsense. Hey, man, maybe some of those games work with the uh, Steam compatibility mode. The, I don't the know. The Protons? If they do, hit me up, and uh, I might give you some of mine, because I'll never fucking use them. I, I did go to Humble Bundle, and I looked through it, and I was like, nope. Nope. Seven pages, unredeemed keys. <laughs> NVIDIA has announced the GeForce RTX 2080, RTX 2080 Ti, launching September 20th for $7.99 and $11.99. Uh, that's almost evil if it does. Handstands, Founder Editions, pre-orders, sold the fuck out, man. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, they also announced the uh, 2070 for 500 bucks, but no one's paying attention to that. Uh, no, the the big thing here is the RTX name. They're changing from GTX to RTX, and what does the R stand for? It stands for ray Radeon. tracing. It's, it stands ray for tracing. Radeon. Radeon. <laughs> Radeon tracing. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is, the the big thing with these cards is that they have dedicated tensor cores specifically for ray tracing, and they don't really do much of anything else. And well, Nvidia now has the best performing ray tracing GPU on the market. Pedro, look at it; it, it looks has... so 
<laughs> expensive. It looks very yes. illuminated. <laughs> and uh, th- that's one of the things they changed besides the RTX is they changed the uh, reference design from the blower style cooler to the regular just blower fans. So it's a uh, it's expensive. Fans are hardly newer. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm happy about this development. Yes, I'm totally excited about this new high performance video card that's coming mm-hmm. out several months after I dropped a couple grand on on this other high end video card that this new one will supposedly beat the ever loving tar out of for four ninety nine too, just a fraction of the price. You got to keep that I, in mind. I, I mean, four ninety nine for something that will handily, uh, according to Nvidia, wait, waits to be seen. Uh, mm-hmm. Crush the 1080 series. Uh, listen, listen, I'm I'm just glad I didn't get the Titan P or Titan XP Windows oh, yeah. t- Titan Vista, whatever the, you want to call it. The Titan Cause, fuck cause now, money edition. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> now I've only wasted five hundred dollars as opposed to a thousand dollars. I, I want to so, say yeah. this, man. I, I want to say this. Uh, it is high, but considering at this point, Nvidia could just fucking print numbers on them, and people would still buy them because you. Really didn't have competition. I'm sorry. I know we're going to get some hate mail, but let's be honest with ourselves. Call what it is. The 10 series really didn't have any competition. Um, no. Nope. This shit absolutely has no competition. And if you want some of that ray tracing goodness for fuck all reason, I $499 is not bad. Yeah. And uh, let's go for the high end. Like 1200 bucks for the reference design of the 2080 Ti without mining inflation is a pretty bold statement from nvidia and i don't really see amd doing anything to counter that and they really should be doing something to counter that sure well, you're I, I, just I, an I nvidia think, shill I, I think the thing <laughs> with amd is they've, they've been so busy killing it on the cpu end that they're like well shit we gotta we gotta fix our uh gonna fix our video card end yeah, yeah. And, i mean and, and interesting, and all, uh, interesting to see what a nut AMD, I, I'm interested in to see what Intel rolls out, but <laughs> I do want to say this. 2020. I want to see, uh, because I was thinking to myself, man, uh, 2080, I got a 980, that poor old thing. It's like, do I want a 2080? And then it's like, man, for me, for me, I think there's like really like two, possibly three reasons that you would consider getting something from the 20X series. One completely legitimate reason, you wants it. All right. No one's going to argue that. You got the money, make it rain. That's brilliant. Two, you're running something like a 970 or below. Maybe you could probably still get away with a 970. I just know from personal use that I can basically run anything at 1080p 60 with my 980. So yeah. I'm not jonesing for that. And three, if you're feeling sexy about it, if you want to do UHD 3840 by 2160 at 60 for all the things. Well, for, for, for the games that will do that, because mm-hmm. there are many games that just won't. Right. Mm-hmm. And if you, I guess the edge case is if you've had like, if you haven't upgraded your GPU in years, then yeah, if, the 2070 might be a very good idea. If you still have an 8800 GT, you should consider one of these 20 series. <laughs> I will say this though, um, because I don't think anyone ever said, oh man, you know what games are missing? Better lighting. But if that's your thing, that's going to be the new thing by the time games get around to taking advantage of that in a few years oh, yeah. and optimized for the, the 30 X series are going to be coming out. So, and I said this on discord during the stream when uh, Nvidia was announcing it, it's like, we already had specularity. The Xbox 360 and the PlayStation three did specularity. Everything was shiny. Everything looked like it was very moist, but do we say really that want to go back to that? Could, could you say it a little slower? Moist. No Xbox. Moist. <laughs> Pervert. What do you think? <laughs> Moist Xbox. <laughs> Show title. Yes. All right. Uh, Moving on. So something that isn't particularly moist or doesn't really make anyone moist. I think I've said that word enough now. Uh is the uh bits of DRM which keep creeping up on video games and there's the Nuvo, there's a couple of others but well GOG or good old games as they used to be called have had since day one uh, a strong policy of not including DRM whenever possible and 
for the most part, they have been very good with that. Uh, the Currently, they say that the landscape has changed significantly and most people don't even realize what DRM is or the issues that it can cause. Uh, so they launched the fckdrm.com website, which basically explains this is what DRM does to your games and these are the people that are actively trying to fight it, like the EFF. Seriously, just if you have spare money... The EFF is a pretty good uh, donation receiver because they're the ones out there fighting for your rights online. So, yeah, it, it's great to see that GOG is uh, still sticking to their uh, fuck DRM principle because say what you will about him, and I have, DRM hurts paying customers the most. Pirates don't have to worry about the DRM. That's the definition of a pirated version of a game. It's easily circumvented and it creates ill will towards the companies who are pushing the RM onto games. So I, I got to say this, though. I got to say this because the Internet, this came out earlier this week and mm -hmm. the gaming community especially the Linux gaming community as a whole, we're like, yeah, that's right. Peace among worlds, DRM, fuck you. Good, good. Gog's awesome. DRM, eat a bag of dick. To, like, without blinking, directly to, ooh, let me go try all my Windows games on Steam. Uh, like, a <laughs> fucking <laughs> nanosecond. Good job, it's Internet. A, I, I, it's a I was funny impressed. Because a bunch of those don't work because of the DRM. Right. So. Yep. <laughs> well, and, and I mean, like, and here's the thing. D GOG is doing a good thing by providing a major DRM free storefront for games, but they're not the only one. Itch is DRM list as well. And to me, it kind of seems like g given given its place, if you go to the fuck DRM website or fuck DRM website, anyways, that's the only thing that shows up on uh, on the gaming um, alternatives. Uh, they pr that for like books, they say go to Project Gutenberg or Open Libra, which only actually have public domain books and nothing particularly new. Um, and yeah, G uh, Gog is the only one there because I my 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 thinking is they're the they're the ones paying to be there. And yes. Maybe <laughs> I, I I I don't know. It's it seems a bit cynical, but that's just how my brain works. Mm. Hey man, uh, Twitch twitched. Oh yes, they twitched so hard the internet sort of kind of caught fire. There were a bunch of people threatening to leave Twitch. Uh, so they changed the way that Twitch Prime works. Previously, if you had Amazon Prime and you could just add Prime to your Twitch account, it would get rid wait, wait, of... Wait, 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 they, they said like, but why? Couldn't this entire <laughs> paragraph just uh, be whittled down to like money? Money. Right. It's literally dollar, dollar, money. Three, the first three, three word... Dollars, but... Yeah. The first word on on that thing is advertising, and the third word from the end is money. So yeah, it's just money. It's why pay once? Why only pay once for Amazon Prime and then get Twitch Prime and get ad free viewing all over the place? When now you can pay twice. You get to pay for Prime and you get to pay for Twitch Turbo. That's yeah. That's it. What? Oh, uh, ad blockers? Yeah, I'd never heard of them. No. Well, and, and 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 here's the thing. They've they've uh, Amazon here has straight up done the cable TV thing because way back when, when cable TV was the new hotness, they're like, yeah, you don't have to, you're paying for it, so you don't need commercials. And then lo and behold, mm -hmm. there's commercials all over cable TV. Yeah, it it is entirely financially motivated because before, yeah, you you get your Twitch Prime subscription, you you're you're, you're already giving a ton of money to Amazon already. So here's a free sub a month, and here's some free. Yeah, some lack of ads now they're like yeah well it seems like we're losing a little too much money because as it turns out hosting a streaming service is fucking expensive so mm -hmm. this um, is yeah. definitely a thing but you could remember amazon like scooped in at the last possible second like the deal with youtube was done and amazon yeah. walked in and was like we'll give you all the monies just don't <laughs> let youtube don't let alphabet get it um <laughs> with me with my amazon prime thing I didn't have it for the free games, dumbasses. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I didn't subscribe to that. But mm -hmm. one thing I liked is that I could take my Prime subscription and subscribe to a channel every month, and I could mix that around. And they, you know, Twitch takes half, period. But they were getting that change that they were just giving me anyway. I'm not going to pay for Turbo for ad free. Uh, no. <laughs> There's a thing, several different things that block ads on the internet. They're available as extensions to your browser. 
Okay. You block, man. You uh, block all the things. Ultimately, this yeah. hurts the creators. Um, but then again, the Amazon Prime thing was like a bonus soda. They're just taking away your bonus soda. There's, oh, yeah. So, <laughs> leaving okay. you with an empty can. Yeah, it can only like half shake up <laughs> at the cloud. I'm yeah. like, all right, I get it. But there's still an option <laughs> if you're invested in the Twitch ecosystem. Quick 2 XP Final 2018. Yeah, Quick 2 XP. Uh, it is a modification pack to the game quake 2 obviously uh, it adds a bunch of additional graphical fidelity options but uh, hd textures uh high quality parallax mapping um self-shadowing all, all this stuff you can read it in the link it's in the show notes um it is a thing that theoretically should work for linux because linux had a quake 2 version um and so yeah uh they have the final 2018 release out you can download it you can check it out. If you're a hardcore core Quake 2 player and you were tired of looking at old ass graphics, I guess this is your thing, right? Yeah. Now you can lo- look at old ass shinier graphics. Man, listen, <laughs> Quake 2 caused me grades in university because. <laughs> oh, I, 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 absolutely. Like, Quake 2, Quake 2 is a perfectly great game, but it's also 2018. So this, 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 is, this is there for the people who, like, I feel like playing Quake 2 for. Once for the, the one time I feel op- obligated to do that every 10 years or so. I know, hey, look, it's man, a 20 like, year old game still. <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree with you, Trugs. I mean, I probably like Quake 2, the deathmatch, more than I like Quake 3 Arena. But um, those are strange times, man, because like the new games were coming out on Linux and we had Loki was like, oh, shit, all right, this is how it's going to be from now on. Psych. Uh, I'm kind of interested in this. I would like to do maybe an after shows or something like that where we set up a quake server because flying spaghetti monster knows we, i got the bandwidth and the horsepower to do it so oh no it'll yeah. bring your rice into its knees won't it <laughs> uh well this version might if someone could get it to work on linux it looks pretty it looks neat i like it go try it it's free in the show notes uh system shock it's got some of the new fancy yeah, um sp- speak- speaking of uh, old shit that you can play on new systems uh System Shock. Uh, this is the uh, get link to the GitHub page. This is the engine re-implementation for System Shock. They have some brand new stuff like OpenGL support. And now the movies play back with audio. And you can skip the uh, you can skip the splash screens because you don't have to stall while you're you're loading shit off your hard drive anymore because we have solid state drives. <laughs> also, the window will now capture your cursor because you know what? It is annoying if you have multiple monitors and you're playing a first person shooter and you make a hard turn and oh well now I'm clicking on something else and I got killed. So uh, that is definitely a thing. You can check that out. You can check it out. Well, you can check it out and build it because it's on GitHub. <laughs> yeah. So what's the advantages of having OpenGL accelerated pixels? Uh, it's not direct 3D accelerated pixels. <laughs> okay. Well, this, this is true, man. It's there. It uses SDL too. So it's, oh, it's mm-hmm. also a CMIC. Yay. Um, okay. At least it doesn't require Java. Apparently, I was reading the uh, the missing features, and uh, the first one is SDL Mixer can play the multi-track XMI MIDI files. Need to find another solution for those. It's like really, I'm sure really? you could put in a pull request. I'm sure, you, I'm sure Ethan's willing to put a bounty on the, for mm-hmm. that. So, yeah, it's like how is that not a thing in SDL? It's MIDI. I don't know, Jordan. The problem I have with going through all these GitHub and GitLab repos is there's not a good way to keep them organized. I know. If only there was some kind of project that would scoop them up, (laughs) stuff them in a flat pack, and throw a nice little UI in front of them. Oh, wait! There's a GitLab link in the show notes for an Athenarium. (laughs) I'm going to stick with that. That, That's my pronunciation of choice. Athenium, whatever Athenarium, I like I like that one better. Uh, this is it aims to be a uh, it aims to be a Steam type client for open source games um, that connects to FlatHub to uh, download and install them. Um, and I mean that that's a good thing, right? Um, it helps you keep your stuff relatively up to date. Um, it's a convenient place for launching your open source games, and it has a prettier UI than Lutris. I don't know, man. I think I found <laughs> a small bug in the installing step. Not supported. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> mm. But yeah, no. Uh, to your Lutris comment, I'm sure Strider can just Strider the UI into Lutris. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, this is a fascinating project. A good way to keep track of your open source stuff. Maybe if they could just add some wine support to it. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> with uh, with Winehub, yeah. That would, I, I mean, it's already Python, so I mean, it shouldn't be that yeah. difficult to take from another project. In, indeed. And uh, integrate with the uh, the wine packs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Winehub. <laughs> Winos. All right, and I guess we got one last Java-based game to talk about before we talk about another Java-based game. Yes, this one is called Jumpai. Mm. So it's uh, it's Mario Java Maker with multiplayer. It's a platformer, design your own levels type of deal. And you also get to play uh, levels that were created by the community and shared uh, over the interwebs. And it runs in Java. It's got because, portals. Yes, yeah, it's got honestly, portals. it looks pretty slick for a Java game. All things yeah, it considered. Does. Yeah, it, it looks the way that the characters move, the responsiveness. I'm not actually looking at the buttons being pressed, but it feels a heck of a lot more responsive than your typical Java game. <laughs> and and again, we, we've talked about it before. Like you can you can bitch about client side Java or the performance of Unity, but anyone can make a good performing game. You just got to put the effort and focus oh, on yeah. you know the performance <laughs> and optimization. So. This is uh, something that's really slick. I mean, Java aside, at least they warn you right on the front page, requires Java 8 or to yeah. <laughs> play. Uh, being multiplayer and having that built in, I would not be against trying this out. I mean, if I saw this on Steam, I'd probably kick, you know, even with mm-hmm. Java, I'd mm-hmm. probably kick up a few shackles and be like, all right, that'd be fun if you could get Steam integration working so I don't have to track down IP addresses and shit like the Or, or forward ports or right. change JVM options. Exactamundo. All right. <laughs> All right, yes. coming up next, uh, we're going to talk about another Java game. <laughs> this one you can play with your system Java. Airships, Conquer the Skies. We're throwing chairs at it. Well, one less than certain countdown later, and we're back, and we're throwing chairs at Airships, Conquer the Skies. Uh, it's developed by a man named David Stark, no relation to Ned Stark. Um, done on a Java based engine, you can pick it up for around 15 of your local particular stinky currencies. What is it in airships? Conquer the skis, you will use all of your creativity and skill to design and build fearsome airships and land vehicles to give you the edge in massive aerial battles. Basically, it's a bit of a crossover between FTL and Besieged, and I don't know, a Lego brick. <laughs> um, this is this is Cherokee sure Edition. This is where we take a game, we talk about it, we uh, break it down. What based on the uh, does it launch? performance the graphics and the controls we give it a score from one to four based on those criteria. and then we decide whether or not we had fun and we give it a touchy feely score of one to four chairs um and then we then we go and read some hate mail so uh let's kick this off in the teeth then how did airships launch for you my favorite segment my favorite time man this is pass fail that's right people um on humbuntu 1804 dot whatever it is this week ryzen 1700 with a 980 it's a Java game, so stay tuned. No issues, surprisingly. It even gives you an option, a warning, you might say, of uh, do you want to use system Java, which doesn't exist on my box, or the built-in OpenJDK, which allows it to launch and run at 60, at 1080, and 2160, as it damn well should, at a solid 60 FERPS. Graphics-wise, windowed mode, no problem. No issues with full screen. However, it does genuinely flip the hell out when exiting full screen at 1080p on my UHD monitor, but it manages to stick the landing. It does some weird blinky bullshit, but everything resumes. Everything still runs. Uh, looking at it, didn't have any flickering, nothing like that. It is nice, crisp, hipster, pixel nonsense, uh, controls. Look at it, you got keyboard, you got your dribble. There's no big issues here, but I'm going to agree with Pedro is it's kind of scattershot, but at the end of the day, everything does seem to work. So I can give it a clean bill of health and throw it down with four chairs. Um, all right. Well, on Fedora 2864-bit with the i7-6700K and the GTX 1080 Ti, oh, my God, does it launch. It launches so hard, you guys. It will disturb the underpinnings of your very grip on reality. Um, Performance-wise, it maintains 60 at UHD. I didn't even bother playing it in 1080p because it's a Java game and whatever uh graphics wise the resolution options are a little bit fucky and sometimes they just don't work but you know if you're playing it in full screen then it works fine and controls uh there are keyboard shortcuts uh they're a little all over the place um but the keyboard shortcuts they they make sense uh 
like uh, M is moved, B is bored, et cetera, et cetera. You're not, it's not going to be like, why did they pick this? Um, there, there is some issues with uh, cursors sometimes where you will occasionally lose your cursor. I found, and someone can contradict me on this because the hashtag works for me, but there's an option in the input menu called uh, use system cursor. And that seemed to resolve most of the losing my cursor issues for me. So uh, I'm going to give it four chairs. Yeah, for me, uh, UHD didn't work over here on Solus 3.99999 uh, with the Ryzen 5 1600 and the GTX 1080. It would not let me launch the game in UHD, but it did launch in 1080p just fine, and the performance was fine. It's, come on, but look at it. Uh, but yeah, when I went to pick a different resolution, like say uh, 3840 by 2160 full screen, it, the game just noped. So I was limited to 1080p in either full screen or borderless window, but if I picked full screen, it would blink all of my monitors. So not only were the uh, resolution options fucked for me, it also messed with the rest of the system, so it gets dinged a chair on that. Uh, controls, Jordan actually brought up the fact that, yes, uh, if you um, enable the system cursor, it tends to remember where the cursor actually is because if you don't it loses track of it it's like you're hovering over the button you can see it's lit and you're clicking on it and it's not doing anything it's like what the hell game and then you move the mouse a little further down it's like oh now it registers but yeah uh once you they do give you that option so i'm not digging them a chair for that but it still only gets three chairs because fuck those resolutions <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for the mix with working. If you are on any of those three distributions, you can understand how it will expect to perform. Moving on to fun. Ven, did you did you conquer the skis? Hey, man, listen, I, I honestly don't completely hate this game coming from me. That's uh, almost borderline praise. It's kind of like FTL. Uh, maybe I should say an FTL light. People say roguelite. Um, relies more on skill versus, and management versus your typical RNG bullshit. You build sky or ground ships, so you get the occasional vague suggestion, as you're seeing here, and you watch shit play out. At least that's what my simplistic brain meets took away from it. However, that's just the surface. And, you know, if you dig a little deeper in this, there's a gang of switches and shit to fiddle with. It's kind of neat. I mean, it's damn near like sim kill ship with all the options for your armors, your weapons, ship management, and the like. Don't mind it. And unlike... So many games released today, it actually has a support. Not only does it have multiplayer, it's got an active multiplayer community online. It's there, filled with people who will murder at your face with the most utmost efficiency, which I made the mistake of trying. And I was like, boom, yeah, I got killed hard. Uh, it might be a borderline spreadsheet simulator, but I honestly kind of like this one. I don't know why. Uh, this is what I'd call... 100% if stuck on desert island game because there's so much shit to do and get good at with this business i mean yeah uh, on the surface it looks kind of simplistic but it, there's a lot of shit to do if you got the time to invest in this you can just fuck around with it or you can get serious with it it's hipster pixel i mean it looks like something an HD Atari 2600 game, maybe, but that's not where the fun in this game lies. And I gotta be honest, $14.99, hard sell. Hard sell for some, but if this type of shit is your thing, I mean, if you want to play SimCity in the air with uh, ground tanks and skyships, you can do it. There, there's a lot of fun to be had, and if it's your thing, it might be worth it, man. So, you know, give this two chairs with an asteroid simply because it's got a steep price tag and you know fidelity graphic wise it'd be easy to pass up but it's well done and uh yeah i, I can kind of dig it yeah um it kind of reminds me a little bit of gratuitous space battles but you oh, have yeah. a little bit more control sometimes um FTL wise, uh, sort of like the the visual component is the main FTL component because FTL has you manage a lot of system and it's not very there there's rng and fdl uh but there's a ton of mitigation strategies you can use but that's we're not talking about that we're talking about airships um you sp can spend a lot of time uh building your airships you can share them on the steam workshop you can export them to files and email them to your friends or put them on a uh, usb drive and sneaker net it to them 
Oh, Morty. Um, yeah, and um, you 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 can or cannot have a budget. Um, some of the missions require that you have to have a set of airships under a specific budget. You have to manage all of them and coordinate your attacks. There's a couple strategies. You can do boarding. You can do tanks, as Pedro mentioned. You can do just plain old airships. And they give you some starting stuff as a base. And I spent I spent a good amount of time building my airship because I like playing with Legos, and that it's a thing that appeals to eight year old Jordan. And that's why I was I invested as much time in the game as I did. Um, I didn't play a, a lot of the multiplayer, um, but I was surprised to see that there, yeah, like Ben said, there was in fact a um, a fairly active community there, um, which I which I guess is a good thing. This is you, it's not like um, that other game that we talked about a couple weeks ago that had <laughs> no um, it was an online multiplayer strategy game with no one playing it. Um, the gameplay itself can be a little bland because you're really just moving stuff around and occasionally you get the option to like input a command. Um, I can certainly say though that I can't outpilot a giant squid though, TIL. Um, <laughs> but I did kick the shit out of some robotic spiders from uh, Wild Wild West. So deadliest predators in the animal kingdom, my ass. There's good stuff in here. And if this sort of game appeals to you, there's it's 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 one of those things where it seems very simple on the outset. And then once you dig into it, they're like, oh, there's strategy and you there's different ways you can construct your ship um, to make to adopt different strategies. And it's 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 interesting. It's not something that I personally would want to spend a lot of time on just because I prefer other games that give you sort of more finer grain control. But it's still pretty solid for what it is. I'll give it a two chair. I really like the idea of building your own ship and seeing how it fares. But, and there's always a but, big sticky but at that, uh, I hate real-time strategy. I do. You want to put strategy in my face? It's got to be something like your XCOMs. I love XCOM. But this one, I kind of, I have to, Jordan mentioned um, gratuitous space battles earlier. And yeah, I kind of wish that the game played a lot more like gratuitous space battles. With the added thing that you get to build your own ships and you deploy entire squadrons of your custom built ships and then you just watch them go and you watch the AI do its thing with what you built. I really, really, really like that. I don't want to sit there and micromanage everything and move ships out of the way and move the things forward. I want to see what I created be you know, used better than what I can do with it because as it stands, and you can yeah. see it in the video right now. I keep losing. Yeah, the, the, the I, micro in this isn't great. Yeah, I just can't muster the effort to give a damn. So, yeah, maybe just add like an extra mode to the game that says let the AI take control and just play the battles out. Because of that, well, that would turn this game into a time sink for me. I would just sit there and build ships and then watch them I either go down in flames or tear through everything that shows up in their way. I would love that. I really, really enjoyed the shipbuilding in this game. I just didn't like the strategy. Two chairs. All right. Well, that's that for um, airships conquer the skis. Uh, we got anything before we move on to hit mill? Any final thoughts you want to tack on? Before we I don't hate it. Up? It's priced a little on the high side, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's it's seventeen dollars Canadian. That's dangerously close to the twenty dollar mark. Unless this is something that you're really into, at least mm -hmm. if you're in Kanakistan, maybe uh, maybe yeah. give it a pass until it goes. Again, on sale. I'm going to throw out. There's a lot of shit to do in here. I mean, if you oh, want, if you want a game to dive in, get involved, and replayability with the online mode, again, could definitely be worth it. Mm -hmm. Seventeen dollars Canadian Strider. That's like three fifty American. <laughs> it's apparently right. fourteen ninety nine. <laughs> Listen, Steam doesn't know how to do math. Coming up next, uh, we, we we talk about the impact of the protons and how we're all going to get radiation poisoning from antimatter. And with this, uh, the review of a game which pissed off Strider so much, he went full... I don't know. Full Strider, I guess. He went full Brazilian. <laughs> On Discord. Uh, we have arrived at my personal favorite time of the show. It's the hate mail, where you get to tell us that we suck, that we got I'll something I'll tell you wrong. why this is your favorite part, because I see in the show notes, it'll be Saturday. Pedro hasn't written a thing, but he's logged into the show notes, like, <laughs> after all week. 
but he's logged in like six times. He goes down and sees if anybody, A, if anybody said anything about him, B, if anybody said anything about him in the hate mail. You'll see one like, one click, like, nope, I'm not mentioned. Fuck these notes. Okay, this week I got a little late, but I usually start around Thursday writing mm. stuff down on the show notes. But yeah, no, this week was, um, well, I had things and stuff. He had shit and to play with. You you have have tell, tell us how to contact us, man. And oh, yes. If you have things and stuff to say, you can go to the contact page on LinuxGameCast.com and you fill out the forum. Make sure to pick LGC Weekly from the little choosy box. And uh, Bob's your uncle. So this week we have a couple of uh, entries. Yeah, Anyone want to take this one? Sure, sure. The first one. Is, or, you, want, you want to do it? Go for it, cut pick. All right. <laughs> All right. First one's from Gray Wolf, not Gray Fox. So uh, Frank Yeager. I'm still looking for you, man. Uh, a hypothetical question. Do you think Valve would look to buy Feral in order to gain indirect X and the Linux porting staff? If they did purchase Feral, Valve control for the port from point of contact to the point of sale. Plus, they would handle all the support. Yeah, no, they're, they, they, they don't need indirect X. They have, they have uh, DXVK and T3DVK. That does yeah. all that. That, <laughs> that just straight up implements the API that they were using in the API that they want to use. So yep. th- th- this is this is sort of the nice thing about Vulkan is that the driver is super basic because it takes away all that abstraction and levies that entirely on the developer. So yeah, you, you can do API re-implementations. Hell, if you're crazy enough like the like the dolphin people, you can virtualize entire GPUs in Vulkan. And <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't really see them, you know, looking at purchasing Feral or Aspire. Num- number one, they're way too far off uh, in England. And number two, Valve is like Ven likes to say, Valve isn't in the business of making games. I, I don't think they yeah. want any of that hotness. Uh, here's the thing, you know, they've funded. You know, we learned that uh, DXVK. Like, oh, why is this thing making all this progress? Now we know <laughs> also why they weren't accepting donations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and they made incredible progress. Uh, I yeah, Valve's got their two GL. I wouldn't be surprised if we see two VL or something like that come out of <laughs> two volt two voc. I don't think they want indirect X <laughs> because even though indirect X, you know, Feral's been able to move over the Vulcan. There's a lot of things now. If you have good enough with Wine and plus, you know, basically anything's possible to get over to Linux from the developers themselves with Unity, Unreal Engine, and the likes. Uh, I, th- I think Feral is going to be more of a like, you know, AAA stuff that we see, like yeah. Glacier engines and stuff like that that they have experience uh, right. with. Uh, and, at least like the, uh, the I'm American totally going to be able stuff. to finish up like three sentences. <laughs> Period. <laughs> About one. <laughs> Fuck it. Okay, coming up next, uh, protons. Oh yes. So the Atomic has asked me to bring my um. I don't know, pretentiousness to this one. So here Way it goes. Way ahead of you. Mm-hmm. Now, with the advent of Proton, as we strive to commit ever mountain and prodigious heresies against the GPL, we have here an outlet for our fragile whims or facile uh- whimsy, but not without moral quandary. Hallowed be the chairs, for they give forth wisdom divine. Their word is law, and their will only to be obeyed. What sayeth they of heretic purchases in this new paradigm? Pedro, Pedro, Where, I, I gotta stop you for a second. I know you're going for something like that, but you sound like a country lawyer. Yes. I that, may be a simple <laughs> country hopper chicken, or even finger licked. Where dual booting and KVM pathrus are now all but relegated to the dustbin of history. Well, uh, we've already answered that. In fact, Ven answered that earlier. It's uh, Yeah, it's still a heretic purchase. You're still buying a Windows game. The fact that it runs on Linux... Yeah. <laughs> wine is wine. Yeah. <laughs> Wine's wine, man. But look at it this way. Look at, look at the bonus sodas that you get with this. All, all the Windows games that you've inadvertently purchased. I have almost 100, and I've never... Outside of uh, Trackmania, Nations United Forever, and... Um, Skyrim. That's it. But I have almost a hundred Windows games that have come from Humble Bundles. Like, oh yeah, I, I can finally play Batman on Linux. Right. And there's <laughs> definitely some good to come out of this. Uh, I'd say stick, play your back catalog. But you know, coming forward, it's going to be a while because the solution right now it's janky. Yeah, yeah and, uh, I'm sure it will improve. But yeah, it's still a Windows game. 
<laughs> and I, and I, and I'm pretty sure like uh, the the whole proton thing because we were we were talking about like oh there's mystery repositories for SteamOS 3.0. I think Proton's going to be like a first class citizen there. I think there's still some stuff that needs to happen in that space before uh, SteamOS 3.0 comes out. Indeed. Okay, so uh, beautiful people, I think it's time to. Um... That's right. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. I don't know why YouTube sent out a notification hour early. I was like, wait, what? We're on? No, we're not. Early early show. Right. Surprise to all of us. I went and double-checked. I was like, no, that's right. Anyway, you get a hold of me. I'm at Vinstone on Twitter, plus Vinstone, Google Plus. Screw with me there. I'll, I'll like, click a heart button or some shit, and it'll be brilliant. I'm Jordan Spung. I'm on an ever never ending quest to try and stop Ben from saying not but three words at a time. And you can find me taking that on at the burning pool on Twitter plus. Motherfucker, I'll have my mute buttons back next week if I get that mixer. I'll mute you, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Eat a dick. Mm -hmm. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me fondling my uh, future Steam machine on Twitter at at unaccounted4 or on Google plus at plus Pedro Mateos. Finger it. Finger the port. Drop it. Go in dry. Bite the pillow. Credits. <laughs> Boom. Just like that. Stairwares. Stairwares to heavens. No, no stairwares to heavens. Because she's Can't buying she the, the stairwares sign? to heaven? Star Wars. It's, it's the shareware to heaven. He just played games. Oh, so she's uh, playing the shareware to heaven. Yeah, man. <laughs> it only goes about a third of the way there. Bring back shareware. <laughs> the demos, at least. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, dem- demos are still kind of around. Occasionally, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're kind of around to the point like, wait, that has a demo? <laughs> well, and, and here's the thing. There's the ultimate demo system that is Steam refunds, so. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two hours or less than two weeks. No questions asked. Okay. All the beautiful people. Frank's fuckos, our executive producers, and our. Regular. We look at Frank. We, we awesome. were promised. We were promised Frank. We got Frank. Frank fucking delivers, man. Oh yeah. Some say he's a little sketchy, but uh, hey, man, if you got a problem, Frank's the one to call. We'll get that shit sorted for you, man. Strider, you didn't stutter. It's just that list. Dynafire, everyone. We love you. Bye. Bye. Smash that like button, fam. Ring you gotta, the bell. Gotta finger, you gotta finger the bell, man. Five dudes. <laughs>